Uh, our guest today is Aldo DiCarlo, the mayor of Amherstburg. Aldo, welcome to our show. Hi, thanks for having me. How are you and your family doing during these uh, interesting times? Yeah, we're uh, we're getting by like I think everybody else. It's uh, difficult for everybody to be uh, stuck inside and not able to go anywhere other than uh, walk. So other than video games, uh, we're playing some board games and uh, keeping busy and doing everything we can to weather through this. I think we're all just hanging in there. I think that's the key word nowadays. <laughs> yeah. How has COVID-19 affected you and the town's operation? Well, it... Uh, it has drastically changed the way we do things. Um, you know, everything from the simplest things about physical distancing, which means, um, you know, we've had to switch to one person per vehicle, uh, still try and get everybody to a location that we need. Uh, you know, proper PPEs, which has been difficult to get. Uh, it's just, uh, it's not business as usual, uh, but we do still have to get everything done. So it's, uh, it's added time. Uh, and, and probably some cost to, to everything, really. How, how are you and council handling uh, council meetings nowadays? Well, we had uh, one with physical distancing when it first started, and uh, we uh, administration literally taped off areas to make sure that we understood our distances, and it worked all right, but uh, once the government changed the legislation and allowed virtual meetings, uh, we switched to that, and uh, it seems to be working out uh, very well. Uh, we do still allow delegations, so we've had one so far uh, where the person actually attended town hall, but uh, we maintain some physical distancing. Uh, they're open to the public to watch, so in that respect, there's still open public meetings, and um, we're getting through, I guess, uh, without dealing with anything too contentious, obviously, at this time. Uh, because of the format, but uh, we are still having meetings that way. And the pub and your residents can still watch uh, your meetings online, correct? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we had uh, just switched online this year anyway, and now really the only difference is, uh, you know, you got that whole Brady Bunch look uh, <laughs> with council uh, on the screen, but outside of that, yeah, everybody can just watch from home. Excellent. Uh, tell us about the, the bylaw officers and their new duties and how that's working out in Amherstburg. Uh, they are busier than they've ever been. Uh, we thought we needed an extra bylaw officer before, but uh, I, I tell you, they, they just can't keep up. Uh, you know, we've got them working overtime. We've got them working holidays. Uh, unfortunately, there still seems to be uh, some people out there that... Um, it just don't want to follow the guidelines and uh, you know it's just it's keeping our bylaw people busy uh, most of its education you know we have no interest in finding people but um, at this point I guess if if it continues we will if we have to but uh, yeah they're having a real tough time keeping up I understand with the state of emergency you've instituted uh, an Amherstburg emergency alerts can you tell us a little bit about that yeah, we've we've had that uh, actually for a few years now. Uh, it really helps a town like ours uh, because of our location with Fermi, and and I guess it's um, you know like we practice these emergency things every year. You just never expect you're going to have to use it. But um, one of the things that's nice that we've done is is the emergency alerts. So we can send out uh, notifications very much like we've received from the provincial government there. Um, but it's something you don't want to use any more than you have to, because obviously if you send out too many, uh, people stop paying attention, we've learned. Uh, so up until now, we've, uh, we've kept it on the quiet side. We have some discussions about, you know, what will be the threshold to use it. And I wouldn't be surprised if some messaging goes out soon as this continues. Uh, but it's a tool that um, is worth every penny because it's, um, it's not just a siren going off anymore. Uh, you know, that in the old days, you had a siren, but no one really knew what it meant or what to do. And with the uh, emergency alerts, uh, you know, you've got texting, phone calls, voicemail, email. So it's, you know, everything's going to be right in the message of what it is and what to do. So uh, for people who haven't signed up yet, amherstburg.ca, uh, I believe it's slash alerts, but uh, it'll be right on the main page there. I was just going to ask that, so you answered my question. Way to go. Uh, COVID-19 is here, and, and now there's also the risk of flooding. How are you preparing for this? 
Uh, well, we have uh, hand delivered notices to everybody in our flood zones. Uh, we've got public works literally putting stakes in the ground with foot markings. Uh, that will delineate not just the level of the water should it come up, but uh, where the roads still are. It's, um, you know, we've had people, uh, everything from appreciation for the, the level of work that, that we're doing and preparing for it to uh, obvious concern. You know, when you see that level of preparation, people start to go, do I need to be that concerned about, you know, the water coming up that much? And the reality is, is, we're not sure, uh, but of course, you know, now's the time to prepare. If the expectations of what uh, they say we're going to get come through, then um, it's not a question of will we get flooding, but uh, how bad it might be. And so, you know, sandbags, stakes, uh, notifications, uh, planning for um, people being displaced. So our initial message is, and this has been a problem as well, because without the pandemic, you just pile them all into your rec center and you're done, right? And we can't do that right now. And so what we've had to do is start considering um, if we still had to get people in, where would we put them and how would we keep them separated? So these are all the things you need to deal with uh, now that we have two things to consider. So step one is telling people to please find someplace else that's safe for you. And then barring that, we have had a few people say that they won't have that available to them. Um, can, can we give them shelter? And uh, so that's what we're working on. Yeah, it's a double whammy. It's really, really difficult. Because like you said, you know, without COVID-19, you've got a pretty big rec center there to, to handle people. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing people got to remember is we obviously do have contingency plans and uh, we do work with our neighbors, but they will all be in the same boat. So, you know, other municipalities in the region have already started getting water over the road. And so, again, this is one of those things where you would rely on your neighbors, but now your neighbors are in the same situation you're in. So now you can scratch that off the list as well, because they'll be having the same situation. Yeah. Well, with this double whammy, how is that affecting Boblo Island? Uh, Boblo, we've always kept an eye on uh, in that it has its own unique needs. Uh, you know, we've put a fire truck over there. Uh, we've made sure that we can get people over there still in the, uh, you know, the same amount of time. Uh, the one big change for them has come with the ferry, uh, but that is a private business, the ferry. And they've, the ferry business has switched from every 15 minutes to once an hour. Uh, but uh, they are still accommodating anyone with any medical issues, uh, are still getting regular transportation uh, at any time, frankly. Uh, they just call ahead, make sure that the ferry is waiting for them and they're good to go. Uh, so, but the uh, timelines for, you know, day-to-day -day transportation uh, is now once an hour as opposed to, you know, the once every 15 minutes. So that's been different. Uh, but the ferry company, you know, they've got the same issues for the COVID that everybody else does. So that's what they've had to do. Well, always looking on the positive or looking forward. What are you looking forward to once this pandemic is over? Uh, business as usual, I guess. Uh, <laughs> You know, there was so much uh, uh, good going on and, and uh, you know, you can't forget about, um, you don't want to uh, dismiss the fact that we're losing people, literally losing people. And, and that's sad, you know, um, um, we want to, we don't want that to happen anymore. Uh, but looking forward, you know, beyond that, uh, when we get through that, uh, business as usual be nice. We, we got a hotel that was getting ready to break ground. We had residential that was just going in faster than, you know, that the developers could put them up. And uh, Amherstburg had, you know, had found a new trajectory. Uh, everything was going very well, very positive. And uh, it'd be nice to, to get back to that. You know, festival season's coming. We know it's not going to happen like it did. And uh, the sooner we can get back to uh, some semblance of life, even though we know it'll be different, uh, that'd be good. That's that's what I'm looking forward to. And, um, you know, I'm sure everybody else is as well. Yeah, I think there'll be a new normal moving forward. But uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that, you know, our medical uh, health care workers and, and the scientists and that can can come up with a vaccine at some point in the future and 
hopefully alleviate some of our issues or concerns. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, right now it, it is hard to look forward. Um, you know, we're so focused on the health and safety of everybody right now, but um, we're still doing all our due diligence and planning for the future. Yeah. Well, Aldo, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, we wish all the best for uh, for Amherstburg, and, and, and when the good times come, we can get back to the festivals and, and all the great recreation you also have out there. So, so pl thank you once again, and please stay safe and stay well. Thanks, you too.